What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about a couple of trades that I made today on the 15th of April in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here in the middle of the month and heading on to the end of the month in April of 2019. So before we do get into all of these different topics for everybody out there that finds value in these videos you enjoy the content and find these videos helpful all I ask from you is to go down below and hit that like button it really supports me and supports the channel in general and if you're actually new to the channel I have two links down below in the description box for you one of them being the discord group chat and the other one being the Facebook group both of these are 100% free of charge and I guarantee to you guys will find a ton of value in these two communities. So without further ado, let's talk about what is going on right now in the market with about 32 minutes left to the market close. We can see here the SPX, the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies is currently priced at around $29.05, down about $2.20, down about 0.07% at the time that I'm recording this video. The Dow Jones is down about $32 down about 0.12% right now, priced at $26,380. And the NASDAQ right now, guys, is priced at about $76.53, up $1.50 right now, up 0.02%. So in terms of the SPX and the NASDAQ, very minimal movement there. And honestly, you can throw in the Dow too, you know, very minimal movement in terms of that index as well. And, you know, unless anything drastic happens, unless anything crazy happens here in the next 30 minutes, you know, the market is going to close roughly, you know, pretty flat, right? Not up a ton, not down a ton, but again, that is if nothing uh, dramatic happens here, and we'll see towards the end of the video if anything did happen, um, you know, through the recording of this video, but let's just hop back over here to the SPX very quickly, so we can do some technical analysis. So there's not much difference from my previous breakdown here that I did on Friday and on Sunday, but for those of you guys that haven't been watching, pretty much the S&P 500 here if we go to the 90 day chart we can get a better look at what's been happening you know we've ended up pushing to a high this past week at about 29.10 and you can see that right here 29.10.54 is the exact price that we ended up hitting and that was actually after we ended up gapping up on Friday you can see we really consolidated at a new level of support roughly at about 28.90 you know really fluctuating from 28 uh 80 2890 ish up to around $2,900 right around here for a couple of days then we gapped up on that big green day that we saw on Friday we saw Disney do absolutely phenomenal on Friday and we kind of consolidated at that level of around 2905 to about 2910 on Friday and it seems like today honestly guys we gapped down this morning right we saw that pretty big gap down from around 2910 all the way down to about 20 896, which was a 15 point gap down in the SPX. But since that did happen, you know, we've been seeing some nice recovery, right? We're popping back up, looking to retest that level at around 2905, which is really just telling me we're just simply consolidating again around this level, around this 15 point level from around, you know, 2895. And if I just draw or really just pick out this, uh, you know, tool I have here, you can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? From about 2895 up to around 29.10, that is roughly where we're trading right now in the past two days, you know, in terms of the SPX. And let me just quickly clear all these different drawing sets so we can get a better understanding of how far we actually are from all-time highs. So take a look at this, guys. We're looking like we're going to close. It looks like the SPX wants to close above 2,900 today. And if we do, that's going to put us right under 
really a level of resistance, right? 2905 is a level of resistance because it was a previous support from back in, uh, you know, the beginning towards the, actually, no, more towards the middle to the end of September and 29, uh, 2018, right? So tomorrow, keep an eye. Are we going to end up popping above this level? Are we going to start heading into the 2915s, the 2920 level? These are things that are going to get us closer and closer to all-time highs, right? So if we do end up closing above above 2905 the next level of resistance we're going to be looking at is going to be roughly at about 2915 which we can see from back here was a resistance towards the end of August in 2018 and if we break that level guys that's a one stop shop to the all time highs here at 2940 so technically right now we have about two resistances to go um, one being 2905 the next one being 2915 before we do test these all-time high. So for fun, let's just see how far we are roughly now on a percentage basis from the all-time highs. We're roughly about 1.1 to 1.2 percent in terms of the SPX from where we are now up to about 2940, which is absolutely amazing. But what I want to let you guys know is take a look at these technicals and I want you to keep an eye on you know, on this potential pullback, right? You know, let's say we do end up breaking 2905 and we test 2915 and we slowly see a resistance there and we slowly start to pull back. That is all um, really... Uh, based on a previous pattern, right? If we slowly start to pull back, I don't want you guys to panic. Don't panic that the markets are throwing are going into shambles because just take a look at this, right? Over the past couple of weeks, you know, every time we've pushed up to a high, we've seen a correction. We've pushed up, seen a correction. We've pushed up again. We thought this was going to be the correction here, but we just pulled back very minimally and popped up again to a higher high this past week. So now if we slowly start to to pull back and maybe uh, break 28.75. Just keep an eye on this 50 SMA uh, of that 50 SMA support here on the 184 hour chart because it's been a support over the past couple of weeks. So all I'm saying is if we do start to see some aggressive red days potentially hypothetically here over the next couple of days, weeks, whatever does end up happening, you know, just keep an eye on that 50 SMA. It's been a support for the S&P 500. So the Dow Jones not. Not much to say on the Dow. We broke the uh, 26200 level of resistance from back in. Uh, you know, the beginning of November in 2018, back towards the end of February in 2019. And we broke that level of resistance a couple of weeks ago, about two weeks ago, towards the beginning of April. We popped up to about 26,400, which was a support from back in September of 2018. Got rejected at that level. We pulled back, tested the 26,100 level of support, popped up from there, ended up breaking um, the 26,200 level with that gap up. I I believe on Friday, that very big gap up. We saw Disney do well. That pushed up the Dow very, very dramatically. And now we're starting to see some more resistance at that level of resistance at around $26,400 again. And we can see with this gap down this morning, that was a confirming point that we are getting rejected by that level, right? But we are still seeing um, that we're close at that point. We're close. And with the recovery that we've seen from the Dow, right we saw the gap down we went down to about 26300 and with the recovery we're seeing towards the latter half of the market here we're getting closer and closer to that 26400 level of resistance and this is what I'm going to be watching for tomorrow guys very simple very brief are we going to break that level of resistance are we slowly going to start and climb to the next level which if we look here is going to be at around 26700 that is what I'm looking for for tomorrow in the Dow, or are we going to get fully rejected and maybe test 26,200 as a support? These are things that could potentially happen. These are a couple of hypothetical scenarios and what I'm looking for out of these resistance and support levels. And that's why, honestly, guys, I think it's super important 
for everybody out there to just draw out resistances, draw out supports, it's really a basic thing to do and it really allows you to understand, you know, where a price of a stock, an ETF, an index, a future, whatever you're looking at, where it could potentially be headed based off of previous, you know, price action, right? It always helps to have these lines drawn out and it really helps me to be completely honest with you guys and I just want to help you out as well. So the Dow looking pretty decent right now, you know, not big up, not big down, just simply flat, pretty much flat on the day as of right now. So the NASDAQ slash NQ here, we are holding that support. We've been talking about the new support, which we broke out of that resistance a couple of days ago at about 76.30, making it a new support. We've really just been consolidating there. If we can just hop to the closer term charts here, we've really just been consolidating there since the 10th of uh, April, right? We popped up on the 10th. We've just been doing a little horizontal uh, channel here. If we just go to the drawing tools very quickly, um, you know, get the channel tool out. You can see what I'm talking about here. If it wants to work right? You guys can see that, right? You see this little, and I know it's a little bit, uh, it's not completely parallel, but you guys can see, right? You can see it's been really hovering in between this. And now what I'm going to be waiting for, are we going to pop out of this level of resistance at about 76.65? That is what we really need to see, honestly, for the NASDAQ to be testing those all-time highs, which are coming really, really close here, guys. We can see we're under 100 points away in terms of the NASDAQ. I do think on a percentage basis, this one is the closest to hitting those all-time highs. Let me just see very quickly, and we'll go back to the Dow right now to see how close that one is because we didn't look at it. But this one's about 1% off. I think the SPX was around 1.1, 1.2. And let's just see very quickly on the Dow. My guess is the Dow is the furthest from all time highs. Yup, and I'm correct on that. 2.2, 2.3% away from all time highs from where we are right now in terms of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Back to the NASDAQ, guys. Very brief. You know, are we going to maintain this level of support? Are we going to retest? the 50 SMA. If we do end up breaking the 76.30 level, are we going to pop out of this horizontal channel to test all-time highs? That is what I'm going to be watching for the rest of this week, heading on for the rest of this month, quite frankly, in earnings season for the NASDAQ and really for the entire stock market, right? Very, very uh, important here. So let's talk about very quickly, what I ended up doing today in terms of my trading, you saw in the title, yes, I had to cut losses on one of my swing positions that kind of went sour today, right? You're probably thinking, was it AMD? No, it actually wasn't AMD. It was actually NVIDIA, guys, ticker symbol NVDA. NVIDIA actually tanked harder than AMD, although we saw a bunch of the semi-companies this morning do pretty poorly, and let me just do a rundown on those very quickly, right? We saw AMD drop very, very drastically this morning, right? We saw MU go down, down the toilet this morning. Uh, we saw NVIDIA very, very poorly went down, uh, very badly went down the toilet here. Let's see Qualcomm. I actually didn't check Qualcomm, but I'm sure, actually, wow, this one did not dump, but Nonetheless, some of the uh, semi companies here, the chip companies that we do watch, you know, they did pretty poorly. So I did not end up cutting losses on AMD because I wasn't down too much of my position, right? Let me just give you a quick, uh, a quick little rundown on this one um, before I do get into NVIDIA. But on AMD, I was actually in, if I recall, at about 27.30 to about 27.40 is when I did take that position a couple of days ago. I forget the exact day, but for those of you guys who have been following the channel, you know I did take a position about a week ago on AMD. AMD. And the fact that we only went down to about 2696, I believe was the low of the day. Yeah, that's the low of the day. You know, I wasn't really down much on the position, right? Let's say I was in at 2740. I believe that's where I was. You know, I was roughly down about 1.4 
you know, 1.5% at that point. And I do want to give it a little bit of wiggle room. I don't want to cut losses, you know, exactly at like 1.5%. I did want to give it some room to breathe because I'm only in this one with a small portion of my goal position, right? This is another big thing here. If I was in this with 100% of my position, right, I would have been a little bit more, um, you know, kind of scared, right? I probably would have cut my losses because at that point I would have been do uh, down a a bigger dollar value than I was today since I was only with a smaller percentage of the goal position, right? That's why I always preach on the channel, you know, if you're looking to swing trade, don't hop in 100% on a position, right? Hop in maybe 10, 15%, 20%, uh, you know, at a time, depending on, you know, what you're looking to trade, right? So the fact that I'm in with a smaller position here, right, that is, helped me, you know, hold it, although I was down a 1.5%, right? But again, I'm not too worried about AMD. I'm still looking to hold this one, but we did end up breaking a technical uh, point here. But the fact that we are reversing back up to the mid 27s here, that does give me a bit of hope for tomorrow, which is why I'm still holding. And another reason why is because we are maintaining the support from a couple of days ago back in, uh, you know, the 9th of uh, what's it called? April of 2019. We're still maintaining that support, which does give me some hope here. But who knows, guys, if it opens up tomorrow down more, I might get burned on this one. I might just sell, uh, you know, sell out of it tomorrow. We'll see what ends up happening. But as of right now, I'm holding on to the shares. It's looking pretty decent as of now. But on the flip side, NVIDIA is actually one that I was down a little bit on, right? I got in roughly at about $190. I added a bit more at about $191 or something like that. And we saw the big drop off today, right? I was in roughly at about 191, let's say average cost. And I woke up after, um, I didn't wake up after the market. I mean, I woke up to it down pre-market is what I'm saying. And if we just go to the one day, one minute, you know, we opened up, it was decently trending down pre-market. And then we saw the cliff dive literally within an hour into the market. The shares were down about $7, about $8 from where I ended up buying. And if we see from about 191 down to where we ended up getting to the lowest point today, which was 183, my shares were down 4%. So I didn't take a 4% loss on this position. I ended up taking roughly, I believe, a 3%, a 2.8% percent loss as I started to see this one was really not looking to recover this morning it was falling it was really just a falling knife right lower lows very aggressive selling here very very aggressive selling so I just figured I'd cut my losses here get my cash back and I'm going to reevaluate this position here over the next couple of uh you know trading days maybe I hop back in maybe I'll just stick my cash somewhere else and most likely guys at this point until we see some recovery in Nvidia I'm probably just just going to you know stick it somewhere else but let's just see what happens here over the next couple of days but yes I did take a loss on Nvidia that is why you saw that in the title of today's video so what did I do in terms of my day trading well I traded TVIX today for a pretty small scalp trade this morning as the markets did end up aggressively selling off so we saw this morning right the markets gapped up a little bit, right? They gapped up to about 29.10, which actually happens to be the resistance that we touched this past Friday. And then we aggressively sold off all the way to about 28.96 within the first hour and 15 minutes of the market being open, right? And for those of you guys that don't know, TVIX is an ETF that I trade. A bunch of the people in our group trade this whenever the market is really red, right? When the market is red, typically the SPX is what this tracks. The SPX is falling down. Well, TVIX is going up in price, right? We opened up at about $20.50. We spiked up all the way to about $22.06. And that was actually about an 8% move, believe it or not. Actually, no, it was a 7% move in TVIX, which is pretty big, right? And take a look at this quick move here, guys. If you were able to catch this, let me know 
know in the comments. Honestly, I was out at this point already, but this move from $2105 to $22, let's see how quick that was. That was literally from $1024 to $1045. That was a 20-minute 20, uh, 20 move there and moved close to 5%. That's absolutely unbelievable. But I actually got into TVIX on this second pump here, right? We popped up to $20.84. I realized the SPX was selling off pretty aggressively at this point. We got the pullback. The SPX made a lower high. This one made a higher low because, again, it's really the inverse of the SPX. And then we started to pop up aggressively. And I got in roughly at about $20.66, $20.67. I wrote it up. Uh, past this point here at 2105, we pulled back, got a higher low again, and we started to bounce up here. And once we broke this previous resistance at about $21 in terms of the candlesticks here, I ended up selling off for about a 2.1% profit, right? So I got in here, I held through this little pullback, right? We made the higher low. At that point, the SPX was continuing its push down. It made a lower high, right? And let me just pull the uh, SPX here very quickly. So you guys can see it, uh, you know, side by side, right? This is actually very helpful for you, I'm, I'm pretty sure, right? So let's just hop to the one day, one minute, and you can see what I'm saying, right? And uh, like I said, right, the uh, TVIX popped down higher low here while the SPX was making a lower high, right? Lower high, lower high, lower high. And that is where really, you know, the TVIX ETF was popping up as this one was making lower highs, right? You guys kind of see how this moves and it's really just an inverse, right? Look at this. It's like, you know, an upwards push, downwards push. This one's a downwards push, upwards push, right? You see how it's pretty much just an inverse, and that's just how this trades. So TVIX, guys, that's what I ended up doing in terms of that day trade, and that's really just the trading update for today, right? So since then, you know, TVIX has been falling down, back down to about $20.50. Nothing too crazy um, in terms of that, but it is seeming like it wants to close red so what am i watching for tomorrow guys there's a couple of etfs and stocks that i am watching one of them being facebook we talked about this one this morning and this one's honestly breaking into the 180 level right now it briefly did break into the 180 level i believe a couple of minutes ago before i recorded this video yep 180.50 we pulled back and now it's looking like we want to end the day off on a higher low from the previous which is a very good sign and what i was saying this morning is uh, Facebook is looking to break this 180 level of resistance and maintain it as a new support. Quite frankly, it seems like it's already doing that, right? If I just extend this a little bit, we can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? We already broke the level of resistance, and now it's looking like it's holding it as a new support. So the goal here is to get into Facebook and trade it up to 185, which is the next resistance level that we're seeing. So Facebook, ticker symbol FB, that's probably the number one one I'm watching for tomorrow. Um, you know, gold, let's just take a look at gold very quickly because we've been seeing a lot of interesting moves in gold today. And if we just hop to the 20-day, one-hour chart, we can see how aggressively gold has been selling off. So gold's been selling off aggressively. It's looking like it's getting rejected here by the 50 simple moving average resistance. We're seeing a bearish cross here. So this does, excuse me, this does signal, you know, more bearish, uh, you know, downside for gold based on the technicals that I'm seeing here. So for the next couple of days, I might be watching, um, you know, JDST, which is an ETF that goes up whenever gold is selling off. But let's say, you know, gold miraculously reverses, right? I was actually looking at JNUG's chart, and JNUG's actually at an interesting spot right now. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. So we're actually at a level of support roughly at about $9, right? Where we've been reversing, or we, we've reversed, rather, on two separate occasions, right? The past couple of times was back in the beginning of March. We reversed from $9 up to about $11.50. We pulled back recently. We reversed back up to about $10.50 from $9. And now it seems like we're not really maintaining it quite yet like we did here as a new support. But 
we are at that level. So let's say gold slowly reverses tomorrow, maybe back up to the 1395 level, maybe, or 1295 rather, maybe back up to 1300. You know, J Nug could be a decent play, but I personally think, you know, since we are seeing a bearish cross there on gold, we might see J Nug fall to the next level of support, which in this case is roughly at about 840, right? At this level. And if we do get to 840 on J Nug, which there's a decent possibility in my eyes, you know, at that point, that's going to be a very attractive price in my eyes for JNUG, especially because gold would be extremely oversold at that point, and we'd see probably a reversal in gold just to see, you know, some push, uh, you know, just to see a little push back up, right? Because typically, whenever gold or any ETF stock index or future in that matter, whenever they get, whenever uh, one of these get hit very hard, right? Whenever they're selling off for a couple of days, there's always about a day or two or three days in a row where we do see some recovery. And that in terms of gold could happen where we could, you know, potentially play J Nug. So I'm watching these very closely here over the next couple of days. We're seeing crude oil make an interesting move here where it's slowly holding a level of support here from back uh, in the beginning, more towards, you know, the 8th, I think, yeah, the 8th of April in 2019 at about $63.50-ish, right around here. So if we do hold that, maybe pop up, you know, this could be a good entry on UWT, guys, because crude oil on a, on a broader perspective here, it's still Still on an uptrend pattern, right? The pattern has not broken quite yet, right? And honestly, I want to see a break out of this little, um, you know, what what can you call this here? This downwards trending channel, right? We're look, it's looking like we're maintaining this, right? You guys can kind of see it. If we break out of this level, maybe back into the 64 range, that could be a pretty bullish move there on crude oil, which in turn would be a great move, uh, you know, great opportunity rather on UWT. So we also saw a huge move today in DGAS. I think it was up like 8% at one point because natural gas has just been aggressively selling off here. So since it's aggressively selling off, it's very oversold right now. We could start to see maybe a little push back up towards that 50 SMA resistance, right? And if that does end up happening, if we do say maybe get back to, you know, 265, that's going to open up a decent opportunity on you guys, which is actually the inverse to uh, D gas, right? So you gas goes up whenever natural gas is going up. So keep an eye on this one for potential recovery play tomorrow. So Tesla is another one, guys, that pretty much got hammered this morning, right? I think Elon Musk sent a tweet out or something. I don't really know what he said. I actually didn't even look into it to be completely honest with you guys, but I saw it in the chat. And the stock looks like it went from 267 down to about 258 this morning. And we're seeing a bit of recovery here heading into the market close. So tomorrow, keep an eye on Tesla, guys. Keep an eye on the potential break back into the 270s. Are we going to break this 50 simple moving average here on the 20-day one-hour chart? These are some things that I'm watching heading into tomorrow. So let's hop back over here to the indexes very quickly to see if we change before I do end up uh, ending off this video. So the Dow, pretty much exactly where it is when we started the video, right? Down about 35 points, down about 0.13%. The Nasdaq down about three dollars and seventy-five cents here, down about point point oh four percent, and the SPX down about three dollars, down point one percent. Nothing crazy here. So it does look like in about five minutes here we are going to close off today really on a flat note, right? So I'm going to end off the video uh, there, guys. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to drop a like, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought about it. Let me know what you guys are trading and subscribe to the channel if you're new, right? If you like the content and you want to see the daily videos that I do make, just hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video. And if you want to be connected with me, 
on a further basis. I have two Instagram accounts down below, my personal Instagram and the Strive Smart Instagram as well. And there's two links as well to the Discord and the Facebook group. Both of those are 100% free. And you can join those to talk to the 600 plus members that we do have in there. And I really look forward to talking to you guys in there if you do end up joining. So I'll catch you all in the next video. I hope you all did great today. Have a good one, guys. Peace out.